It's time to hear it from Harlan. Utah Director of Athletics Mark Harlan takes you behind the scenes with the Utes, the Pac-12, and Collegiate Athletics. Now here's your host, Mike Lagasholt. And welcome to the February edition of the Here from Harlan podcast. Coming on Mark Scherzer's thoughts on the big moments from Utah's busy winter months of sports. Molly O'Keefe from the Red Rocks drops by for his one-on-one conversation and a look at some facilities projects on campus that's been in the news recently. And uh, Mark, it's great to see you. You too, Mike. Appreciate uh, you coming over today and we can get folks caught up on what's going on. So much has gone on since you and I last talked. We had the Rose Bowl, which was kind of a big deal. We've had uh, a full winter of sports. In fact, 12 current and former skiers over the Olympics right now in Beijing competing and uh, just a lot going on. Your thoughts on what you've seen the past couple of months with Utah's teams and just how our athletes are performing. Well, it, it really has been a whirlwind. It's been a blur, but I tell you what it has been is extremely exciting and gratifying to see so much success from our student athletes. You know, the Rose Bowl, what an experience for our student athletes on the football program who just had a remarkable season, got to the Rose Bowl. Uh, we had a great week out there, the Rose Bowl Tournament of Roses Committee, and everybody else has treated us like like we were we were extremely special, and we very much appreciated it. The guys gave everything they had on the field, all you can ever ask of a student athlete, and it was it was great to to be a part of that. You mentioned the you mentioned the skiers. I mean, I got word you know a couple of weeks ago because all the federations were were picking their their participants, and gosh, to see twelve, yeah. to see twelve, and I, I there's a lot of reflection when you think about that, Mike. It's the Eccles family, Spence, who just has invested in that program for us and we know what it's done for us right the multiple national champions but look what it's done for for the the sport multiple countries including team usa um i'm getting a little weary eyed and trying to stay up because i'm so excited i'm watching it all these crazy times but very proud we've got a lot of uh a lot of skiers ahead and i encourage everyone to go to our website uh, paul kirk and team put up a great schedule of of when the olympians are competing uh, and what channel they're on. And so you can follow it that way. But we've had tremendous success and uh, really excited about what's going on. Yeah, Six Nations uh, have Utes on the team or a current and former Utes. And by the way, they all come back, Mark. The current people will be back for the NCAAs. We're hosting that in March 9th through the 12th at Soldier Hollow and Park City Mountain Resort. So for fans, come on up to the venues and see some former Olympians. That should be a pretty cool week. Yeah, it's great. It's such an interesting challenge for Frederick, our head coach, right? Because we have such elite skiers. Right. Every year we deal with World Cup and them having to go and come back. Now with online education being so good, it's been a little bit easier for those students to keep up with all their classes. But yes, there is an understanding on our program. You shall all return <laughs> and be at the mothership for the national championship, yep. which we're, as you said, we're so excited that it'll be up in Park City this year. All right, Milo Keefe along in just a bit, but how about Friday night at Polite Pavilion, Utah ranked third in gymnastics, UCLA, a slow start, but Tom Farron told me two weeks ago, he goes, that night they'll score 197.4. They'll be right there. They'll be primed for us. They were, and we'll talk to Miley, but uh, to see them and her in particular be so clutch to win that meet under less than ideal circumstances, two falls on beam. She nailed it in the end. What a fun night for the Red Rocks. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to Miley when she comes over because, in my opinion, her getting that 995 as the anchor on the beam to win the meet, continue the streak going against uh, the Bruins and beating those guys, was about as clutch a performance as I've seen, not only here at Utah, but along, at other stops along the way. Look forward to, to having her take everyone in yeah. to the uh, insight on, on mentally what it takes to perform when everyone's screaming at you on the beam, Mike. I mean, just unbelievable, but, but great job by the Red Rocks. Also in basketball, a couple of big ceremonies for Watmush Saka. That one was supposed to happen a couple of years ago, then COVID-19 hit. And also Tom Chambers, a guy who played here a long time ago. I know that they were both just, well, Tom was, and then Watt's family, just so thrilled to have their jerseys hung in the uh, rafters. Yeah, a couple great special nights. Um, you know, like you said, we were able to to finally honor Watt and his family. You yeah. know, uh, COVID would have, would have uh, you know, put us back a year or so. But great to have his family there, and great to see his jersey up. And then this just this last weekend with Tom and his family, got to meet, got to meet his parents. They were so proud, and, and certainly all his family, and Tom was real emotional about it. It was yeah. really, it was really nice to see. You know, you, you forget sometimes we have athletes that go on to great pro careers, but one thing that is common is they know that a big part of of all of that was w- what happened here at Utah. Right. You see that with the NFL guys. See that with our skiers that go on to huge things, and certainly others. So Tom was really honored, and it was a special moment. And I appreciate all our fans being so engaged, staying in their seats for both performances, or I should say, presentations at halftime. And, 
it was those were really special nights. Yeah, you're right. Those guys go into our Hall of Fame and they play 12, 15 years in professional sports. They come back and being in our Hall of Fame means almost as much as anything they do. And I think Tom really exuded that emotion here over the weekend. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's he's special and and uh, gosh, he he. He had an amazing career here. He was on, yeah. you know, he had just an amazing career, and then to go on to what what he did in the NBA. I had people sending me dunks of his uh, <laughs> after the game on Saturday night, but uh, I really studied up on Tom and really felt like uh, he was very deserving. So I'm, I'm glad that we got that done. All right, women's basketball four and four in the Pac-12. Mark, they had some cancellations. They're playing some pretty good basketball. They're young, freshmen, sophomores, really kind of propelling that team with Brenda Maxwell, and so great for them. And also. Andrew McMinn, our first year lacrosse head coach, made his debut Saturday at Rice Seckles. Great crowd on hand, and they gave number 12 Denver all they could. They lost 14-13. Yeah, it was, it was a great performance by, by the lacrosse team. Great Denver team, as you say. We had over 2,000-plus people in Rice Seckles to come and watch it. Thank you. The tailgate lots were lit, and yes. they were, they were, everyone was having fun. And it was a great afternoon of lacrosse. I think that team is going to uh, have a special season and appreciate uh, Andrew and his leadership. Women's basketball is rolling, you know, three yeah. in a row now, climbing the charts. Got a makeup game this coming uh, week versus USC. Excited about that. And then they're, they're on their way to the Bay Area. Uh, Lynn's team is rolling, um, you know, still right at the top, if not the top in offense in the Pac-12. And, and you know, it'd be interesting to see where the journey goes. Got to stay healthy. Got some great teams in this league, but they got a real shot to make the tournament if they keep grinding forward. All right, our tennis teams, Mark, up to a great start. Men's team, 8-0. They took down Texas Tech yesterday as we take this on a Monday. That match happened on a Sunday. And women's tennis, 7-0. Yeah, tennis is off to a great start. They sure are. Couldn't be any better. <laughs> uh, couldn't be any better. And, and a bunch of great student athletes really competing. Uh, they've already had some road trips. Still won those as well. So great test as we get into, again, a very difficult Pac-12 uh, schedule ahead. But uh Appreciate, appreciate both those programs because they're playing great. All right, Mark, before we get to some other news, I want to talk about men's basketball. They have had some injuries. They've had some issues related to the current day health climate, but they've been playing some good basketball as of late. Got a win against Oregon State. Now the Oregon stuff's so tough here on Saturday, and also spring sports ready to get ramped up with baseball and softball starting in the next few weeks. Yeah, I appreciate the question about men's basketball. You know, obviously, I've been around teams for a long time in this job, and and when you get into a losing streak, you you really have two choices, right? You can kind of fade and not care and and get worse. I think I'm seeing the exact opposite of that with Craig, his staff, and 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 the student athletes. They are fighting. They are actually getting better. You can see it. Great to see the win over Oregon State the other night. An incredible battle against Oregon with a chance to tie at the end against an Oregon team that arguably is the hottest in our conference, maybe outside of, of Arizona. Right. So really impressed. I got a chance to travel with them up to Washington uh, last weekend. I embedded myself in there. I was so impressed in the preparation, uh, the way that they approached that game. Double overtime, again, you want so badly for them to, to, to have more success. But I am really, really proud of Craig. Um, he, is, he is everything I hoped he would be. And I'm really appreciative of all his efforts. Not easy, right? right? They're all winners in that program, and they're used to winning. Uh, but we're going to continue to grind. And I really, really appreciate our fans who are coming out and supporting. You really felt it at the UCLA game, and particularly you really felt it this weekend. I just encourage everyone to keep coming. As far as the the other sports are getting started, you know, baseball and softball, they're out there working. The weather's been cooperative, so right. we've got a lot, lot more outdoor work. That should bode well for the future. Softball, I believe, starts this weekend, and then – the following weekend, we'll get baseball going. So be fun to uh, to see those teams take the fields uh, and encourage everyone to come out. Women's track and field, men's and women's swimming and diving, and men's golf on the way as well, having very successful years and more on those programs and upcoming shows. Well, Mark, before we get to our interview with Milo O'Keefe, I want to pass on some academic information. Utah's department GPA from last fall was a 3.329. That's the fourth highest semester GPA all time at Utah. In fact, the last four have been the best four in our program's history. Also announced in December was the NCAA graduation success rate. Utah came in at 93%. That's the fifth consecutive year. Utah has been 90% or better. And Utah's 93% rate is tied for the third highest figure among all Power Five public institutions. Incredible. You know, you just sit there and you think about everything that the students go through and competition and how they have to work so hard to prepare for that. But at the same time, they're thriving in the classroom in, in so many different ways. Tribute to our coaches who are recruiting incredible students in, our students who are keeping the, the main thing, the main thing, which is to stay on course to graduate and be very successful, and our academic staff who does such a great job with them and, and all the other people that surround the athletes to help them with their journey. But 
Um, it's terrific. And, you know, part of all of this comes from our donors who help support those efforts. So it's just a team, team effort when you see numbers like that. Uh, we're very proud of them, and uh, we look forward to continue to see those numbers even get better. All right, the Red Rocks undefeated, and Miley O'Keefe, a two-time national champion, had one of her biggest moments on Friday. Mark, we'll talk to her about that in just a moment. This is the Here from Harlem podcast. Time now for Utah's head man to catch up with one of Utah's star student athletes. Once again, here's Utah Athletics Director Mark Harlan on the Hear It From Harlan podcast. Well, as I always say, uh, I love lags uh, and I love all the things we talk about, but far and away my favorite part of of this podcast is when we have a great student athlete come in to get us updated on how he or she is doing. And today, boy, do we have an awesome student athlete. We have Miley O'Keefe from our gymnastics team here today. And we set this up last week. Um, I mean, I knew the Red Rocks would be at Poly Pavilion competing against UCLA, but little did I know what kind of drama uh, and excitement and just an amazing performance by the team and certainly Miley. So we're going to get into that and talk a little bit about how our experiences at the U are going, particularly over these last few years and all the craziness. But Miley, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So let's let's start just let's talk about the meet that just happened and then we'll get into some other things. I mean, anytime the Red Rocks compete against the Bruins and it's been like this for years, it just seems to bring out the very best in both teams. Uh, The crowds are big, whether it's here in Salt Lake or in Los Angeles, but you guys had them on ESPN on Friday night. I'm sure many people listening watched uh, the the meet. Um, Take us through just that night and certainly how it ended with your performance on the beam. Yeah, so I mean, going into like that week, Tom had told us, you know, the Bruins are going to step up for you guys. They kind of had a slower start to their season, Um, but we always know that they're going to bring it for us because they want to beat us, um, and rightfully so. Um, But on Friday, we started amazingly on bars, and the momentum just carried over to our other two events. I think uh, we had a career highs, or not career highs, but season best for our team on bars and vault and then floor was also amazing um so going into beam we kind of knew we were at a good point and we didn't want to stop and we knew what we were capable of and that we could hit a mid 198 which would be an awesome score for us and then our leadoff did great emily she scored a 99 i believe and you know, then we just had a, f- a couple off routines, which isn't what you want. But right. it happens. It's gymnastics. It's hard to be perfect every single weekend. So we had two falls, which means we had to count one of them, which isn't exactly what we wanted. But it is what it is. And then Abby just picked up the momentum for us going into Crystal's routine. And then before I, sco- before I got on the beam, a girl on the floor, Jordan Childs, she got her first career 10 on floor, and it was amazing. Um, but, of course, that meant a loud poly pavilion yeah. for my beam routine. So, honestly, I took a couple more extra seconds than I usually would to get on the beam because I knew if I waited, the crowd would hopefully die down a little bit. And, personally, I don't like doing beam when it's super loud. Um, but, you know, I know what I'm capable of, and I know what I've been training. So I just kind of trust in my training and trust in my coaches that they trust me in that anchor spot. And I had an amazing routine, and it felt really good, and we pulled off the win. Well, it's just listening to you. You're just being so intelligent in how you talk about it, and I'm just sitting here thinking, and I mentioned this to you when we walked in, but I was at the women's basketball game on Friday, and, and by the time I got in front of the t- television, you know, the beam had begun and, and, and I saw everything you described. And then on the television on ESPN, it says you needed a 995 for Utah to win. So that's how things were shifting. And you answered that you didn't know what score that you needed to win, which would make sense. But so basically all of us watching, that is pretty close, if not perfection, right? Mm -hmm. And then we could also hear the crowd uh, going going nuts. And you and I talked about that. You, you don't think that was intentional by anyone at UCLA. It was just an exciting moment. Just like when there's a 10 here, it just, this was the spot that you were in. So here's the question I have for you, because I think this is what separates the elite from all the rest. It's the mental part of it. How you guys do the beam is amazing anyway. I, 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 it's really just fascinating how you can do those things. But when you've got 6,000 people screaming in your direction, how 
Did you hear it when you were in the routine or are you just in a different place when you're, when you start? Yeah. So I don't think the noise was malicious or anything, you know, it's all in fair sportsmanship. Right. And, um, but I definitely hear it before I get on the beam. But then once I'm on the beam, I am so focused on what I need to do and what I know I can do that I'm barely hearing so you anything. You just can't, you're just doing your thing. It's just you are in a space that yeah. only you are in. Like I can hear it for sure, but I don't acknowledge it at all because it's not worth my energy. Like all my energy is focused on the four inches in front of me. Four inches. Just think about that and what you guys are doing. But then you landed and, you know, you're, we've been watching you now for three years and, and when you stick stuff, you really, like, you can tell by your reaction. You knew that's exactly what you expected of yourself, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I've been training really diligently inside of the gym and I feel like that 100% shows up in moments of pressure. And like you said, when I stick, I don't do what they would call a college stick where it's like a hit and show. I, I really stick it. Yep. And just because that doesn't give the judges a second chance to question my stick. I love it. See, these are all the things that people love to hear about, all the stuff that you guys are thinking about. Well, congratulations. I, I, I really, I've been here for, for four plus years now. I thought it was the most dramatic, uh, impressive moment by any individual student athlete I've seen. So credit to yeah. you and all the training and work. And one of my favorite things is to watch when folks work so hard, how they're able to be rewarded individually, but of course, collectively as a team. So, so great job. Thank you. Well, let's, let's take a step back. Uh, born and raised in Las Vegas, yeah. which, which, which there are people uh, born and raised in Vegas and, and live there. Obviously, you came to Utah. You had a lot of choices uh, of where to go. You, you were elite uh, gymnast. Why Utah? So it was definitely on the top of my radar for a long time. And Tom started recruiting me at a young age before the recruiting rules changed. Um, so he was always a big supporter. You know, it wasn't just like, a, I want you for your gymnastics. He was like, I want you for who you are as a person and who you um, are as a leader and who you can be here at Utah. Um, so I thought that was really important to me. And obviously, you guys have a really good program for what I wanted to study at the time and something that's still like a um, second option for me, obviously. Um, so, I mean, it was just like the whole package, close enough to home, but not too close, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, so. you, you can drive if you need to. Exactly. Perfect. So you come here, you're part of a very big time recruiting class. You, you arrive and you're, you're I've almost, I was always interested about our gymnasts because it's, you know, individual sport. And then they come here, we see this on our tennis programs too, you come here and now you're part of a team. And oh, by the way, you're away from home and you're in this big place. How was that adjustment? I mean, I know it was a few years ago, but how was that adjustment for you? Um, personally, it was really hard. I, like you said, I was born and raised in Vegas and I was born and raised in the Salciano Elite Gym. I never switched gyms. I had the same coaches my entire career. So I think that was one adjustment was just like learning my new coach's um, atmosphere and the way they worked. Um, and then obviously being away from home was a little hard. You know, you get homesick, but then sure. you're excited to be with your new friends. So it was kind of like this mixed emotion. And then I was also homeschooled from third grade till I graduated. So just getting back in the rhythm of being in a classroom and being with other people and learning the different realms of college uh, it was hard, obviously. And you know, I think gymnastics was also a little hard because you talk about the individual aspect and then you talk about the team aspect, right. and it is so different. I mean, individual pressure is so much easier to handle, I feel like, rather than team pressure because when you're relying on 15 other girls or how many other girls are on your team versus only relying on yourself and knowing when you do something and you make a mistake, the consequences aren't only for you, but they're for this whole entire program. Wow. That's a, I guess that is a heavy burden when you just haven't dealt with that before, like you, like yeah. you said. So you, now you're in your junior year, you're obviously one of the leaders on the team. So now how does it feel? Is it fully adjusted and, and love this team aspect of it? Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm pretty close to 100% adjusted and, I love having a team by my side, and no matter if we make a mistake or not, we win together, we lose together. You know, this is like a family, and I mean, I never would have thought I'd be this 
comfortable around my girls and around the team and just in the sport of gymnastics, it is like 100% my happy place. Oh, that's great. That's really good to hear. And I know you're really involved. Um, you know, you're kind of all in. You're in, in, obviously, your academics, kinesiology is, is your major, but you're also involved in the department. I've, I go to swim meets. I've seen you at swim meets. Obviously, you have friends that are outside of the, of the gymnastics program. So what, what, just the college experience in general, how's it treating you? I love it. I mean, it's everything I could have imagined and more. You know, when I was little, I was like, oh, I just want to go to the Olympics and I don't really want to do college gymnastics, you know. And then I got a little older. I changed a little bit of path and I am so happy I decided to do college gymnastics. It is the best thing that happened to me. Oh, that's that's great. How, how is kinesiology? Have you found that to be really challenging and how do you manage the time training time and your academic time? Yeah, it's all about time management. You know, um, kinesiology as a degree is probably not the hardest degree, but not the easiest as well. You know, there's those extremely hard courses that you have to take to do it. Um, But originally I came into college wanting to be a physical therapist. So kinesiology really made sense to me. Um, But now I've kind of like changed paths into wanting to be a college coach for gymnastics. Um, So let me write that one down. (laughs) Athletic directors always keep their lists. (laughs) Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm uh, working for now. But um, kinesiology is great. I love it. I love learning about the body and it's definitely something that could help me in my coaching. And you said you're minoring in nutrition and that's been an interesting journey for me as a director here and working at other places, and, and really that piece, along with our mental health team and now our nutrition team, really investing in that in that area. I think that's so important. So, well, that's great to hear that you are thinking about coaching. And and it's funny, I, I've talked to a couple other students who are passionate about when they're done. We talked to Britton Covey about this on the football team, with the NFL thing he wants to coach. What is it about coaching that really uh, is exciting to you? Um, I just think it's the fact that you can help others who are just like you achieve what they want to achieve and like it's it's cool because when I watch a skill even with my girls now sometimes they come up to me and they know I'm really interested in coaching so they're like what do you see and I just love looking at a skill and almost being able to replay it in slow-mo and pick out something that I notice is so like in the wrong place or whatever you can see it yeah because the good coaches can see that stuff, so you can see it. Yeah, and I'm I'm really good. I'm a really good beam worker, and so I tend to be really good at coaching beam. I can do other stuff, but the other stuff is so quick paced. It really takes a keen eye. So I think as I develop in my coaching, I could work on that for sure. But beam, I love coaching beam. Well, that's great. That's that's really exciting. Well, let's close with this. So you guys, let's get back to the current season. So you guys are ranked third as we tape this uh, mm-hmm. this morning. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Coming off a, a big time meet, another win. By the way, our four or five years in a row we've beaten the Bruins. I want to make sure everyone uh, knows that, which is an incredible accomplishment. So you guys obviously are in the middle of your season. Project out for me a little bit. What do you see? I know it's you know day by day training and 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 meet by meet, but how, how do you feel things are going? I think they're going really well. Um, obviously, we still have some stuff to work on, you know. And you talked about the mental aspect of gymnastics, and I think. That is 100% the hardest part because you can do all your physical stuff in the gym, but if you can't handle the pressure or whatever, that changes everything. Um, So February is kind of a long month for us. Uh, We still have four more competitions within the month of February. So, I mean, it's the shortest month of the whole entire year, and we have five competitions in it. We go Friday, Monday, Friday one week. So that's definitely going to be one of those weeks where we just rely on our training and trust in the process. Um, but I'm super excited for the end of the year. Um, you know, we compete against LSU at the middle of March and then we go to PACs and regionals and nationals. And so super exciting. It will happen fast, but you're right. So funny. I was just looking at your guys' schedule. It's just week after week as we, as we build toward the postseason. Um, and for everyone that knows, again, we're just, we're blessed that the Pac-12 championships are, are again here in Salt Lake. The regional will be where it will be. And then, of course, um, with the ultimate goal of going back to Fort Worth, where we just missed it last year. Um, by the way, you won two national championships last year. Um, so it'll be great to, to have you go back and, and defend those both, those both those championships. 
Well, thanks for spending some time with us and congratulations again on an incredible career, uh, which is still a lot in front of you, but an incredible career at this moment. And again, just that moment on Friday, I'm sure you've seen all the videos and everything, but what a moment for you, but frankly, what a moment for the University of Utah. So we're very proud of you and keep it up. Thank you so much. Thanks, Miley. And welcome back to the February edition of the Here from Harlem podcast. Michael Iger Show, along with Utah AD Mark Carlin. And Mark, leave it to you. I've talked to Miley O'Keefe several times, read several interviews, and you are the first one I think you got out of her that she wants to coach. Breaking news. Breaking news right here. I love it. Yeah, just, uh, she's just awesome. And, you know, again, an elite performer. But just to hear her talk about the transition, you know, homeschooled, comes in here, Tom's environment in the program and the ability for her to thrive, right? Right. And now just she went from how do you do a team sport and all that pressure to to now she can't imagine, and so much so that she wants to coach. So great to listen to Miley. That's why I want our, our people listening to this to hear these stories of these incredible students we have here, but uh, she's just she's just terrific. Yep. She graduated high school a year early, by the way. Crammed in some classes to get here. She was so excited, and it's worked out beautifully for her, and Great to have you catch with her for a few moments. All right, Mark, let's turn our focus to the national scene. Uh, the NCAA Constitutional Convention took place. Uh, that will be developing. But NIL just seems to be one of those topics that has been out there for a couple of years. It's been developing here as well as nationwide. Your latest thoughts on how that's developing for us. Yeah, it's been been terrific to see our student-athletes finally have the ability to, to monetize their name, image, and likeness. What a concept, right? You know, <laughs> we've seen it with other students uh, on campuses that are involved in other things. So, been fun to watch our students get involved. You know, we have the Elevate You platform, which is our partnership with the business school. Many of our students have gotten involved about brand management. And now we're starting to see a lot of the results. You know, I'm, I get my Monday morning briefings and to see that we're climbing the, climbing the charts in terms of monetization, both in cash and also in, uh, in trade. We're starting to see more of our high profile students that have time now do some right. commercials. We certainly see Cam Rising, for example, be on some commercials and there'll be others coming. So very, very impressed and pleased. We know that we have to continue to read the landscape, work with the conference, work with the NCAA to make sure that we're providing everything we can for our students in the right way. And we know we got more work to do. Mike, the challenge continues to remain in the recruiting space, mm-hmm. right? We all knew that this could be the challenge with, with NIL. We wanted all the existing students here to, to be able to do it, but how do you work in the recruiting space? And the NCAA came out with two things, right? You can't use it to induce right? Student athlete to come here, can't cut deals and all those things for students to come here. And secondly, you can't do any pay per per play. You can't pay a kid per touchdown. Those are the two things. Yeah. Well, the second one I'm not too worried about, right? We're not seeing pay for play, but certainly let's be honest, there's some inducement activities going on. I've had a chance to talk to our coaches coming off the road in multiple sports. They're all kind of coming back with some central themes of, you know, they're running into certain students on inducement. So it's just a matter of the NCAA trying to figure out where they go from here, right? We understand there's some some issues with some of the litigation, but hopefully we'll get to a place where the association can get back with with you know if you're doing that, if you're breaking those rules, the inducement rules, you know there's there's accountability there. But that's the negative side. I think we'll continue to work on that. the The idea I want is to have our students flourishing and our coaches to be able to say, look. If you come to Utah, you're going to get all these amazing things, education, you're going to get better in whatever sport, and look at one of the students right now at Utah are able to monetize or do what they want to do. So pleased with that. We know we got more work to do, obviously, more education with our students to get involved, but uh, it's an ongoing process, I can assure you of that. Yeah, yeah it's certainly evolving, and uh, but some good things we're seeing already, as you mentioned, some of the endorsements by Utah athletes we're seeing recently. Other news last week, Mark, the board of trustees approved bonding for a $61.8 million indoor practice facility. You can give us some details on the plans for that. Yeah, you know, it was a, it was a fast process. And I say fast because, you, you know, the government sessions are just one time a year in Utah. It's not an ongoing piece. You know, for, for a while now, I've been been watching the, the need for indoor space, not only for football, um, but also for all our, all our teams. We have a jewel an absolute jewel in the, in the Eccles indoor facility. And our football team utilizes it. Our other teams utilize it. But the other piece of that is the community mm-hmm. utilizes that. And pretty much every night after 6 p.m., it opens to the community, and there's hundreds of, of youth in there. I think my son's even been in there on the weekends. And that's a really cool thing. And by the way, very unique to the yes. University of Utah. 
But at the same token, we have more indoor needs. We've added lacrosse over the last few years. Um, you know, the training always goes up every year. There's more training. So we felt like we really needed more space. And so um, that's what we're looking into. There's a lot of work ahead to do on that. You have to get approvals and those type of things. And then we have to go out and raise the money for it. And so that process uh, will begin. We don't have a timeline on when it will be done. We, we know that we're going to work really hard. Um, but uh, the Eccles Field House has been amazing. The idea of having another one to complement it and, and more for 24-hour use for Utah student-athletes is really what we're trying to, to look at. But like I said, a lot of work ahead, but uh, it just makes sense. All right, Mark. Always a busy time in February with the basketball season's winding down tournament time just around the corner. We'll let you go for today, and we appreciate the time. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. All right, that will do it for the February edition of the Here from Marlin podcast. Thanks to Miley O'Keefe from Gymnastics for dropping by. Thanks to Mike Gillen for sending life expertise for Mark Harlan. I'm Mike Lagerschultz. Until next time, so long, everybody. This has been the Hear It From Harlan podcast. Subscribe and listen all year long as we keep you up to date on Utah Athletics.